Hello everybody, um, I'm Steve Rogers uh, and this is Carl Gimblet uh, and we're, we're going to present a sort of a, a two-parter really. So the first part um, is essentially looking at findings that, that I, I came up with uh, um, from uh, part of a, an MA that I was doing. So I, I did a postgraduate certificate as you do in, in learning higher education and then you can, okay, you can build that up into a master. So I thought, well, I like getting degrees, so I'll get another one. Um, and that's from there. And the, the project that I was doing came at a time when Keel were just writing the policy for essentially rolling out content capture. So it's very similar to the Surrey version where it doesn't have to be lecture capture, it could be something else, audio, visual, whatever it might be. Um, but of course lecture capture is the thing that most staff think about when you talk about things like con uh, content capture. Um, and so I wanted to really find out why staff had certain views on the usage of, of lecture capture and also what students were expecting or they thought the usage of lecture capture um, should be. So the, the first bit is from my action research project on that. And then the second part of the, the talk is, is from Carl, a bit more about the, the rollout itself, um, what Keel did to try and engage people as that rollout was um, occurring. So for the data from this, it was only part of an MA, so it's not a huge project, um, and I based it within the, the school that, that I'm in. So the school that I uh, work in is Geography, Geology and the Environment. Uh, I'm a lecturer in, in Geology, but I'm also the, the Director of Education for the school. So I, I sat a, in, in a, or sit in a position where um, by sending out a, a questionnaire, quite a few people actually answered it from the school. So we've got several hundred in the, the school, staff and students, and out of that 59 individuals responded. The questionnaire was mostly free text um, answers. So most of it, there's a little bit of sort of where do you sit in the school, what subject do you and things like that. But the vast majority of it asking people's perceptions was all free text. So there's lots and lots of quotes. And of course, most of those aren't in here today, but there, there is a, a huge document with them all um, thematically analysed, uh, sat on my computer. But really quickly, the participants, I think it's important to, to go through these because it does show a really nice um, cut through of the school of, of who actually answered these. So it is a really quite wide, um, widely answered questionnaire. So we had a breakdown of staff and students, and that sort of reflects the staff and student ratio of the school as it is, so 30-60. Um, and I also asked these participants um, were they aware of any literature or any projects around lecture capture and the usage of it? So try to, to get an idea of where their perceptions were actually coming from. Um, and only 20% of the participants had any idea of anything to do with lecture capture or any projects that had been done or any um, literature that had been published around this area. And surprisingly, I thought that was going to be all staff. So I thought that 20% would be sat within the, the staff. But actually, only half of the staff were aware of any of the, these arguments around it. So it shows that most of the perceptions that were, were being portrayed, whether that be negative or positive, were probably based on anecdotal evidence um, or, or hearsay and myths that people have, have sort of spoken about lecture capture. Uh, and then just a, a quick, that's the breakdown of where people are from uh, in the school. So from all of the programmes in the school, both staff and students were, were replying. Uh, again, so there's the breakdown for the, the staff. Um, and again, these were from uh, the staff levels, if you like, were from early all the way through to, to prof, prof, prof level. Um, and one was, I think they put their answer as something like battle-hardened and weary. Um, so there was a, a good mixture of, of staff uh, in there. So just to go through some of these, and this is obviously a very, very small snapshot of, of that project, so it doesn't cover any of the, the real thematic um, identities of some of these topics or anything, um, but it's really quite clear that staff and students have huge um, differences in what they think lecture capture does or should be doing or should be used for or how it should be used. Um, and both of them, both groups have uh, different ideas on how it changes behaviour in class, both in class and outside of the class afterwards, so how they use it um, in their own time as well. Now, staff um, basically indicate that they think it changes behaviour within the classroom in terms of note-taking and engagement. So they say that they feel that if we have lecture capture and we roll it out, students will stop taking notes and they'll stop necessarily asking questions or pointing out things because they can perhaps go back to it at a later time. Um, students say that they, they think, they sort of back that up a little bit and say that they can use it as an uh, improvement to their, their notes. So they don't want to, to use it necessarily as a way of reducing their note-taking, they want to use it as a way of improving their note-taking if they do miss anything. Um, attendance, surprise, surprise, was one of the biggest things that came out from staff. So they decide uh, straight away, with this without any data, at Keele we struggle to, well we don't get any basically analytics from our lecture capture usage, so we don't know who's using it, when they're using it or anything. We do attendance monitor, um, but there is no evidence from that that says that a lecture captured room has fewer people coming into it. Um, and 
staff still have that perception. And I remember last year, one staff member came up to me and said, well, I've just had half of my students not there for this session. That's proving lecture capture that has affected it. And I thought, well, that's one session, so you know, you're supposed to be a scientist. Come on. <laughs> So how do students use the lecture capture? And this is just a couple of the quotes. I had loads, there's loads of, um, if anybody is interested, I'm completely happy to share all of this. There were, there were some horrible quotes for things like, I pay money for this, I demand that it's used, um, all the way through to um, how students are actually, or think they are using it. And most of it has very, very similar themes. So it's things like, I use it if I miss uh, a session, um, and I use it to look back on lectures, and I'll, I'll top up my notes, um, or I'll use it for revising exams and practicals. Um, and this is just their perceptions of how they should use it. This isn't based on anything. They're not being told how to use it, um, and they're not basing how they use it on, on any um, experience, I suppose. So this is when they were first using it at Keele. So the perceptions on sort of note-taking and, and how they take notes. So people are saying it's more selective with note-taking. Uh, they can space their work to supplement the areas from lectures that they miss, allows them to finish notes. So Apparently, people don't finish them, they can finish them afterwards. If there are confusing topics, they'll go back and, and look at the lecture capture um, afterwards. Uh, and there's others that say it wouldn't affect the way they take notes at all, so they'd still carry on doing what they've, they've always been doing. And again, just to, to highlight, this is completely without anybody telling them how to use it. Same for the staffs. So there's been no, at this point, dissemination of how you should use lecture capture, unless they're the, the, in the minority of people that have seen any studies um, about it. So the perceptions of benefits, and this is from mixed staff and students, uh, and it was quite nice that there were actually a good number of positives that people thought would come out of using lecture capture. Uh, and, the, and some of the best ones were, were about equal access for students. So these are things for exceptional circumstances, um, people with disabilities, uh, quite a lot of people highlighted workers, so people working or carers, um, and a lot of staff actually highlighted that they'd be quite happy, even if a few students didn't turn up because it was lecture captured, they would rather have their, their, their lecture captured for those few people that had a disability or couldn't do, you know, couldn't attend for work or whatever uh, reasons that might be. Students like the, the sort of instant access to it, so it's very much um, a cultural thing, I think, of, of you know. Netflix binging and stuff where they think, oh, three in the morning, I'll go and do the coursework now. Um, and it was highlighted as a, quite often the word tool came up. So the word and the usage of, of lecture capture as a tool being used um, came up. Very interestingly, this is from the staff, very few actually provided any pedagogical benefits. They, they, they very rarely said that it would have any effect or change on their teaching and their teaching method and how students learn and why students learn. They just saw it as a background tool and a secondary um, something that was rolling in the, the background. Not that Basically, they're agnostic about it. It's just there. They're not going to edit it. Students can use it um, if and when they, they wish. The perceptions of negatives, again, uh, yeah, yeah, the attendance staff overwhelmingly indicated that they think the attendance would be um, uh, negatively affected, which we haven't actually found to, to happen. Um, and there were the odd ones from the students that back that up. So there's a quote there from a student that basically says there's no point in going in uh, because the slides are on the, K the, the VLE um, and I can just listen to the, the lecture if I want to. Uh, but that was a, in, a, in a minority. The second negative was logistical issues. So this is more about students complaining about audio quality, so our microphones are fixed, so if, like most lecturers, you wander around a little bit and go and draw something, the, the audio goes up and down and there's bits of static and all sorts, um, and that was really the, the second highly um, picked out negative that students sort of perceived for that. So the really early conclusion, and I said there's loads more quotes and there's loads more work actually done on the, th the thematics of that, um, but really it's that staff and students want completely different things from lecture capture. Staff are expecting it to do something, students are expecting it to do something, and they don't technically marry together. Um, and that's really our fault because, or the, the institute's fault I suppose if they're forcing people, not forcing, but, but in, in <laughs> embedding it in, in everything. Um, without telling students how to use this. So the word tool is really important because it is a tool. It's not just going to fix things. It's not going to make things happen um, out, of, out of nothing. And so we need to teach people um, how to use it to target specific reasons or specific themes, specific things within their, um, their, their lectures or within their programs that it will have an effect on. So maybe that will be attainment or whatever it might be. Most perceptions are not grounded by any pedagogical evidence, so that's quite important as well. So a lot of this hoo-ha of people complaining about attendance, not actually um, legitimate uh, in most cases. Um, and there is no real clear evidence, this is from mostly um, published literature, that there is huge changes within, um, within any 
environment that it's used. If it's just used as a background, secondary thing that's just running, it doesn't necessarily affect the, the learning environment. Where it does affect learning environment is where it is targeted, and there, I know there's lots of sessions coming up later where there it is specific targeting of lecture capture for specific things, and it does have an effect. Um, so my early conclusion, or the conclusion from this MA, was essentially that students and staff aren't given enough information on the intended use, what it should be expected for, and how they can use it. So the intervention was to create a couple of leaflets, one for staff and one for students, uh, and they're really, really basic. They just say things like the expectations for playback for staff. Uh, how does playback, this is what we call play playbacks, um, the lecture capture name in, in Kiel, attendance and playback and the playback usage. And then for students, it's very similar. What happens with attainment, note-taking, and attendance? Um, and we now have an opt-out system at Keele, uh, and from my school we have zero modules opted out. So there is perhaps evidence from having interventions of going to people and saying this is how you should use it, students this is how you should use it, um, that you know, people will uptake and use it for various different reasons. They're all different reasons, but um, that, that's what I sort of find from that Masters anyway. Happy to share any info people want. <laughs> What have I got now? 30 seconds? Yeah, go. Um, <laughs> now, just going back to what sort of, because obviously I'm, I'm the, the main lecture capture lead, uh, or content capture as I now call it, for Keele University. And I have been for two years. Um, and sort of, uh, sort of Steve's kind of, you know, out, sort of underlining how the students and staff still don't know how to use it, or how they should be using it, is testament to how, how poor the comms infrastructure at our university is. Uh, we don't have an internet as such, for example. Um, the only way I can get I can get in front of academics and students is by basically ambushing departmental meetings um, and just sort of turning up. Hey, I'm here. Can I talk to, about this for ten minutes? Kind of thing. Um, so that's my being my, my, my main sort of method of sort of evangelising and talking to people about their chapter. Um, so I've been, I came in halfway through the uh, the, the, the project. So I've been there for two years. It's been very very difficult sort of um, selling letter capture to many academics and schools. I mean, I was sort of, uh, and was much, I was much slimmer two years ago, and I had more hair. I'm only 22, um, and um, and so it, it's been, it, it's been really difficult. What we've been trying, I've been trying to do above and beyond the uh, uh, Steve's faculty um, is you, I've been using Twitter, like to Twitter, um, default mental, mental emails, and the student union as much as possible to push out the messages about lecture capture. Uh, we created a video that we've been trying to get all academics to, 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 to show to the students in the uh, in Freshers' Week or Induction Week. A small video, it's two and a half minutes long, and it tells it tells the students exactly what lecture capture is, what it's about, how to use the system. Um, but it also, and it's touched on uh, many many things that we discussed. It's a squirrel, by the way, because squirrel <laughs> is the Keel University. Um, mascot, yeah. I suppose. And there's just loads of grey squirrels. And we've got lots of grey squirrels, hundreds of squirrels. It's, 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 it's an apocalypse way to happen, yeah, really, isn't definitely. it? Um, and so, um, and so, this is it's kind of a summary of, of, of kind of what, what students are telling me, what academics are telling me, what I've read in the literature, and looking at what other institutions were doing. Um, we wanted to really, really sort of reinforce the idea, and again, lots of folks have touched on this, that the lecture isn't the be-all and end-all of the student journey, the, the learning journey, you know. It's just there as a springboard, a, a sort of a, to, to leap into the wider subject area. Um, and so this is kind of the, uh, this is the end of the th three and a half minute or so video, and obviously that, that, that's, that's sort of left to, for the students to linger for like a whole minute, um, a sort of, um, to get, just to give them a, a fine chance of using this thing properly. Um, also, we use the repurposed Emily Norman's uh, and colleagues' slides. Emily Norman is an academic who has championed lecture capture. She starts out at Aberdeen. I think she's at Glasgow now. She's a psychologist. Uh, she's written a few papers debunking the Clinton and Edwards sort of paper, etc., etc. Um, and so we repurpose them, and it's something else that we try and push out to students as when we can through our various comms channels. Um, engaging academics has been a lot more, a lot more difficult. So we've, I've used things like, for example, we created the Google map of the campus, um, and we sort of, uh, I drew around sort of all the buildings, click on the building, and it tells the academic exactly what lecture capture facilities are in that kind of that building. But that's been quite useful. And also, we've, I've, I've made a real, a real sort of effort to spend a lot of time making sure that there's an enormous amount of support materials uh, that we can sort of point academics to. Um, that's been sort of, that, that's been really successful too. So everything from Using the interface itself, how to edit. We use open, a system called OpenCast, um, which is a it's, a it's a shareware sort of platform, if you like. It's open source rather, um, and so you get the basically a zip file, and then you have to unpack it and build the entire infrastructure yourself. 
Uh, I would suggest nobody does that ever. <laughs> ever. Get something to do yourselves a big favour, buy off the shelf. Unless, you, unless you're masochists, off the shelf, please. Uh, take that from somebody who's suffered. Um, and so, um, to things like, more practical things, like this is a, so we're on electric capture system. Um, you go into the room, uh, the podium, we have tiny touch screens attached to the side of the monitors. And on that touch screen is an interface like this, you know. And so again, all, most academics will just pause and unpause, pause and unpause when you want to discuss something confidential or sensitive with the, with the students, or there's a, there's a seminar session or whatever. Uh, because a lot of academics couldn't get their heads around pause and unpause, um, we sort of uh, we made more inf information infographics and, and again just try to really reiterate uh, how to use a system and how not to sort of get themselves into a bit of a bit of a faff. Um, more recently, as Steve alluded to, we, we, are, we now do opt-out, um, full opt-out. We've got, I think, with about 80% of, uh, of, of modules are now recorded. Um, we've gone through the, down, the, down the content capture sort of uh, route in terms of the policy. So we're saying to academics, you know, a lot of the module leaders, you can opt-out, but could you just give us a little reason as to why you think let your catch is not a good idea? Obviously, that's, that's gone down like a ton of bricks. Um, so um, all, all it's for really is so we can get an idea as to people, how people's styles marry or, 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 or sort of uh, can accommodate lecture capture or content capture or they can't. So we can make adjustments ourselves in terms of teaching, teaching the learning provision. Um, and as on the back of this, so as somebody said earlier, I think it was, it was Lauren, um, we say to academics, you know, the, the, the advice is if you don't do live lecture capture, then please try and do some form of content capture for your students. Um, it, up only, of course, if it enhances the learning experience. Don't just do it because you feel you have to. Uh, and so we started running workshops where we're showing academics how to use um, uh, visualizers and webcams and smartphones, uh, screen casting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they're going down fairly well so far, uh, especially with a bunch of physicists who, up to this point, were just not interested in lecture capture at all. And before we finish, I don't know if you guys have, uh, have seen these Lumens visualizers. If anybody has one of these, there's a USB uh, port on the side. If you put the USB drive in there, this will record your voice and everything on the, the palette, okay? And then you press stop, and then you take the USB drive out, and that session that you just made with this is recorded. You can just stick in your reality, okay? I've used these before, they're excellent. They're expensive, but excellent. So, um, so that's it, we've got, so the, the uptake to this, this, this point is, is, is quite good. It's been a really hard journey for me personally because I've, I've been involved in writing the policy, um, in, in doing a road show around all different schools and faculties around this technology. Um, and, um, but yeah, so it's, it's we're getting there. Ooh. <laughs> it's better to tears now. Uh, so thanks, anyway, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.